when it became famous back in 1989 as a result of a very specific claim that he made. And that claim is that he worked at a place just south of Area 51. He called it S4. He was interviewed by Las Vegas journalist George Knapp in a series of very detailed interviews. We put him on the air, blacked out his face, and he told this incredible story. Exactly what's going on up there? Well, there's several, uh, actually nine uh, flying saucers, flying discs, uh, that are out there of extraterrestrial origin. He said it's a secret that needed to be told to the world, that his life was in danger, and that he was coming forward and, uh, and wanted to tell it. I could feel my jaw dropping. Is this real? We left there thinking, wow, if this is real, this is a really big story. So we decided, well, let's take the time and get this right. Over the next eight months, Knapp conducted a thorough investigation of Lazar's sensational claims. According to Lazar, before he worked at S4, he was a physicist at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, the facility that developed the atomic bomb. The central question for me was, did he work at Los Alamos? Because if he did, it would at least be plausible that if he worked there in a technical or scientific position, that he could also be hired at a place like S4. So that's where we focused our attention. I started calling Los Alamos at first. Nope, we have no record of a guy named Bob Lazar. I got the phone book from the Los Alamos lab. There's his name in the phone book. I call him back and said, hey, he's in the phone book. They finally sort of exasperatingly told me, yeah, we've got a record of him being here. We found Bob Lazar to be credible um, about his background, his, uh, his scientific training, where he had worked. For more than two decades, Bob Lazar's critics claimed there was no evidence of any secret military base in the Nevada desert. But then, in 2013, a Freedom of Information Act request forced the CIA to finally acknowledge that Area 51 is real. The story of Area 51, it exploded around the world. The reason you know about Area 51 is because Bob Lazar and George Knapp on the news, 1989, made it a household name. That's the reason. All of that came from Bob Lazar. To many researchers, the government's acknowledgement of Area 51 established Lazar as more than a UFO pioneer. His inside access made him a whistleblower. To many researchers, the government's acknowledgement of Area 51 established Lazar as more than a UFO pioneer. His inside access made him a whistleblower. My name's Bob Lazar. I'm known for working at a classified base known as S-4 out in the Nevada desert near Area 51. And there, we reverse engineered alien spacecraft. But could Lazar's sensational claims be true? Former Air Force pilot Captain David Fruhoff worked at Area 51 from 1979 until 1985. And while he was never shown any alien technology, he attests that Bob Lazar's account of the facility is entirely accurate. When I was there, we knew about S-4, but we didn't know what they did. And I know people uh, that had worked for me that after I left there, they had seen Bob Lazar there. And they admitted that to me recently. Bob Lazar's statements and all the things he had said have gelled now to the point where I think he's very credible. <laughs>